We are bombarded with imagery of clear, healthy skin, or what's perceived to be clear, healthy skin. However, what you mostly don't hear about is that the makeup of our skin is more than just collagen, more than just dermis and epidermis, more than human even. Our skin houses within its structures a whole ecosystem that is invisible to the naked eye, made up of billions of microorganisms. The population of this ecosystem is not just on the surface, but thrives deep throughout the tissues of the skin. And despite our past attempts to rid ourselves of these passengers, we have found that their health is linked to our skin's health and that we are inextricably linked together with this tiny universe we call the skin microbiome. Hello, I'm Dr. Thomas Hitchcock, and welcome to the first episode of our series, Beauty and the Bacteria, an exploration into the world of the skin microbiome. In this series, we'll take a closer look at the entangled nature of our skin's relationship to the microbes that live on and in our skin, and how that affects our lives from birth till death. Over the years, we've grown accustomed to the fact that microbes play a large part in our daily lives, some for the better, and some not so much. Who doesn't know about the potential health benefits boasted by fermented foods, such as yogurt or buttermilk? Such health benefits were recognized hundreds of years ago, but it wasn't until the early 1900s that a Russian scientist and Nobel laureate, Ilya Michnikov, first hypothesized that the benefits of such food came from the bacteria which they contained, not simply by the low pH of the foods from the metabolites which the bacteria created. In actuality, it's both that can provide benefit to us. Coined in 1960s by Daniel Lilly and Rosalie Stilwell, the term probiotic initially referred to the metabolites that some bacteria produced, such as lactic acid, that had effects on other bacteria. However, today probiotics refer commonly to bacteria that are beneficial to our health. The World Health Organization defines probiotics as live microorganisms, which when administered in adequate amounts, confer a health benefit to the host. But why is it that adding certain bacteria to the digestive tract provides a benefit? Well, the answer to that lies in another term, the microbiome. The microbiome refers to the collection of microbes, including bacteria, fungus, archaea, and virus, that lives in and on our bodies. The first description of this concept is attributed to Nobel laureate Joshua Lederberg. However, although his concepts described the microbiome, it is debated where the actual terms microbiome and microbiota were first coined. Nevertheless, the reason that probiotics can be beneficial is because a balanced or normal microbiome can compete against possible pathogenic organisms for space and nutrients, it can affect the immune system, and it can produce metabolites that can affect our tissues, such as vitamins, amino acids, and antioxidants. However, a disruption of our body's healthy microbiome, referred to as dysbiosis, can lead to health issues such as inflammatory skin diseases of the gut and skin, allergies, and certain cancers. And unfortunately, these diseases are what most people think about when they think of microorganisms. So what do you picture when you think about the microbes that make up the microbiome? Virus, fungus, bacteria. It's likely that the image that those words stir in your mind are pictures of disease, discomfort, or just disgust. When I tell people that they have billions of bacteria on their skin, I typically get some sort of reaction, which is usually negative. Bacteria on the skin are indeed associated with a number of conditions, ranging from the exotic, like necrotizing fasciitis, also known as flesh-eating disease, 
the macabre are like staph infections caused by methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, also known as MRSA, or the common, like acne, which has been blamed on the presence of a bacteria called Cutobacterium acnes. But what if I were to tell you that it isn't as black and white as bacteria equals disease? For instance, many people have MRSA on their skin but never show any symptoms or manifest any disease. I, for one, know that I have MRSA on my skin from my time in hospital over 12 years ago, yet I don't have a staph infection. Also, that bacteria that people blame for acne, C. acnes, we now know that it makes up to close to all of the bacteria that lives in everybody's hair follicles, whether they have acne or not. Even more so, this species of bacteria is actually critical to the health and balance of your skin. This bacteria is so important to the skin health that we will be spending a whole episode just discussing it. But first things first. While we'll be focusing on bacteria during this series, as they do make up the vast majority of the skin microbiome, we should mention that research is currently also looking at the effects that the mycobiome, or the fungus microbiome, and the virobiome, or the virus microbiome, has on our skin's health. The thought of a virus living on our skin immediately gives one pause due to the strong association of the word virus with disease. And indeed, there are some unpleasant conditions associated with skin-related virus, such as herpes and HPV. However, while there's still a lot to learn about the virobiome of the skin, we do know that a type of virus that targets bacteria, called phages, actually can have a rather large impact on the structure of a given microbiome. So much so that these phages can implant their genetic code into bacteria and live in harmony with the bacteria for a while, at least. We can even estimate the type and number of phages that have attempted to infect a bacteria by looking into the bacteria's CRISPR element, which is a primordial bacterial immune system. Needless to say, that all these microbes have a niche, and more and more we are learning that they can all work in some sort of symbiosis, until they don't. And so as we begin to learn about the potential for bacteria to be associated with disease, we began to find ways to attempt to sterilize our skin. Antibiotics, antimicrobials, preservatives in our skin products and personal hygiene products. But the reality is, bacteria are inescapable. As you walk across a room, you are literally swimming in a sea of bacteria. When you sleep, you are sleeping with billions of bacteria. When you eat, you are consuming bacteria. So, if bacteria equals disease, then why aren't we all sick all the time? The reason is that the relationship between bacteria and the human body is much more complicated than we originally thought. And with the latest cutting-edge scientific techniques, we're beginning to realize how fantastically intertwined our health is to the health of our microbiome. If you look at the scientific and medical literature, you can see that the research in the field of the skin microbiome has begun to skyrocket. While this is wonderful news for those of us who seek knowledge on the subject, it also attracts attention from opportunists who see the term microbiome as a buzzword to monetize. Just like in the year 2020 when everybody seemed to become an overnight virologist with expertise on COVID-19, likewise the study of the skin microbiome has gained notoriety, and this has resulted in a plethora of self-appointed experts on the topic that flood the internet with information, or many times misinformation. And this isn't always intentional. It only takes one well-intentioned blogger to cite an outdated study and to spread misinformation unwittingly far and wide. Here's an example of a website that I saw on the top of a search list when I looked up bacteria-related illnesses. The list cites 12 common diseases that are caused by bacteria. As you can see here, number three on the list is influenza. Number six is measles, which are not associated with bacteria, but viruses. Number eight is malaria, which is not associated with bacteria or viruses, but with a eukaryotic organism called plasmodium. Needless to say, while the person or persons who compiled this list may have had great intentions, they are misinformed. So, 
let us be part of the solution, making sure that we are informed about the latest scientific discoveries in the field of the skin microbiome. And with this series, that's exactly what we'll do. In this series, we'll dive into the world of the skin microbiome. We will explore what exactly makes up the skin microbiome, how our daily habits affect it, and can either help or hurt the symbiosis that is important to our skin's health. We will look at the industry of skincare and how this hot topic of the skin microbiome is changing the way skincare is being formulated, and how companies are making attempts to jump on the bandwagon, both successfully and not so successfully. We will discuss what you should look out for when there's still as much misinformation out there as legitimate information. And we will also take a look at Crown Laboratory's research and innovation within the skin microbiome. At Crown, we've built out a state-of-the-art microbiome research and manufacturing facility and assembled a brilliant team of scientists that will enable us to be leaders in innovation in the field of the skin microbiome. Our goal with this series is to share with you the information that will help you to change the way you think about your skin and the bacteria that lie within it. So that concludes this first episode of Beauty and the Bacteria, introducing you to the world of the skin microbiome. I hope that you're finding this topic as fascinating as I do, and rest assured there is much more to come. Thank you for taking this journey with me and investing in your education. I think you'll find it worth the while. Next episode, join me at my home, where we'll cover the basics of microbiology so that we can all start this journey by learning to speak the same language. We know that after viewing each episode, you might have more questions or thoughts on the skin microbiome. While we aim to address most topics on the skin microbiome during the series, we love hearing from you. So please send your questions, comments, or topics that you'd like us to cover to comments at beautyinthebacteria.com. You can also follow us on social media listed here to watch our Q&A sessions, interviews, or to send us your questions and receive updates on this series, as well as other news and information on skin microbiome initiatives at Crown. From all of us here at Crown Laboratories, thank you for watching. And remember, you have billions of bacteria on your face. And we think that's awesome. Goodbye for now.